The cell in the diagram are important for defense from the pathogen in air. So these cells are ciliated epithelium cell, and these cells contain uh, ciliated cells and which contain cilia for sweeping mucus towards throat, while mucus is for entrapping the bacteria or dust particle or pollen grain. Uh, it prevents these pathogen or dust particle to reach into the lungs. While the goblet cell, they release mucus for entrapping these dust particle or pollen grains. So which organ of the body are the cell found in? So the organ in artery, they're not present. In the brain, they're not present. These cells are present in lungs, in the trachea, and the bronchus and bronchial, small in quantity. And their function is to sweep mucus, which is containing harmful particle like bacteria or viruses or some minor dust particle. They sweep it toward the throat area. So C is our correct answer for this question. Now, question number two, the graph shows the link between the smoking cigarette and the lung cancer. So then we're going to see that what is the, the relationship between smoking cigarette and the lung cancer. So here there is a dotted line. The cigarette smoke is given there while the lung cancer deaths are reported with a solid line. So we're going to see that if the, the rate of the cigarette smoke is increasing, the death rate by the cancer is also increasing. So they have positive co-relationship between and when it start decreasing, so it, it started to decrease after the few years of 1975 to, you can say 1995. So the lung cancer death, uh, they started to decrease. Now there is a question, uh, the average number of cigarette smoke per person starts to fall in 1975. How many years later did the number of lung cancer death uh, also started to fall? So we can see after the 1975, there was overall decline start from the cigarette smoke. Uh, what about the, the death rate started to the cigarette smoke in 1995? So we're going to see the, what's the difference. So 1995 minus 1975 is answers that 20 years. So answer will be D here. Which term describe the interactions between a living organism and their physical environment? So we need to see the definition. For example, the community is the organism belongs to the different species living together in the same environment that is community. While the habitat is a natural place where the living organism are living, that is the, the habitat. While the trophic level we define the position of organism in food chain, that is trophic level. What about ecosystem is the interactions between a living organism and their physical environment. Mean interaction of the biotic and abiotic factor are producing ecosystem. The mass of an individual in one example of their phenotype. So mass is an example of uh, the external representation of character. So that is the phenotypic representation. So which row describe the variation in the mass of individual within the populations? So the mass is a continuous character. And this continuous character is influenced by the environment. For example, uh, if the person is eating more food, is getting more body mass. And it's also influenced by genetics of the person. So that's why it is a continuous character and it is affected by environment and it's affected by genetics. So B is our correct answer here. A flower homozygous dominant for the color is crossed with a homozygous recessive. These two are uh, the two true breeding variety. What is the predicted percentage of the heterozygous offspring? 
For example, homozygous recessive is represented with a lowercase r, lowercase r, and homozygous dominant with a capital R, capital R, and they're going to produce a one single same type of the gamete. And these same type of gamete are crossed by the Punnett scare. So lowercase r will go with a capital R, and then the lowercase r will go with another the capital R. So this is going to produce one type of the variety that is heterozygous. So they are producing 100% heterozygous organisms. So D will be our correct answer here. The animal can indicate water pollution level. The animal uh, were sampled in a various part of the river. And for example, some animals, for example, mayfly larva, this is present in low water pollutions. While in high water pollution, there's a slug worm and red-tailed maggot that's living in a high water pollutions. So there, there is an indication for high water pollution. So we're going to take these two indicators. So slug worms and red-tailed maggot as an indicator to the high water pollutions. So the water coming from uh, the biomass downstream coming from Country Park, so and the biomass downstream coming from housing estate, and third, the water coming from factory. So when we see that in a red-tailed maggot, so the water coming from uh, the factory, it is highest level. So that will come in a highest level. What about the water coming from house, uh, housing estate? That is in medium, while the water coming from country park, this is in low. So in this way, that uh, we'll, we will classify according to this given criteria. So here, so country park is the low and housing estate, that is the medium. What about uh, um, our factory? It is higher. So we can find this data with a reference of slug worms and red-tailed maggot, which are living in a high, high pollu polluted environment. So B is our correct answer here. The human share 98.7% of their DNA with uh, the bonobos. So bonobos uh, is also uh, the similar genetic value with a human, so we can identify on the basis of genetic analysis. While the 97% of uh, orangutan, so that's that has a similarity with a human. So phylogenetic tree of a P and Q represent the development in the classification of human. So which row matches the phylogenetic development in the classification of human? So we can see uh, one is a phylogenetic tree is P, other is a phylogenetic tree is Q. So here, uh, why the phylogenetic P is more suitable because the human is originating uh, at the second, uh, the third level with the bonobos. So you can see 98.7% is uh, the similarity of human with bonobos. So in this way, that is more closer to the bonobos as compared to the, uh, as compared to the phylogenetic tree Q. So on the basis of after DNA analysis, <clears throat> we can identify the 98.7% similarity of uh, human with bonobos. And uh, what about most, most scientifically accepted, the phylogenetic tree is the P. Why? Because it is giving the, the more closer lineage with the bonobos, and that's the orangutan is further away from that. So that one and their originations level is according to this given percentage. So most accepted, that is the A value is correct here. Mutualism and parasitism involve the two different organisms living together. So for example, if there's a two different organisms are living together and they both are benefited from each other, so we are representing the mutualisms and parasitism. So which statement describe the difference between mutualism and parasitism? So both organisms are benefited, living together is mutualism. That is a correct definition and only one benefited in parasitism. So in a parasitism, one organism is benefited while other is neither in benefit. 
So that's A is our correct definition for both. The one method of the surgical treatment for cardiovascular diseases involve inserting the metal or plastic tube into a coronary artery. So we are inserting the stent or either in, uh, the plastic tube in a coronary artery. How will this surgical treatment help to improve the condition of patient who has cardiovascular disease? So uh, the option is uh, it increases the blood flow to the lungs. So no, it is increasing the blood flow to the heart tissue. If it increasing the blood to the heart tissue, so in this way, it will increase the oxygen supply to the heart muscles. So B will be our correct answer here. The human genome project mapped in the human genome. This gives many benefit and the risk. So which statement in an, is an ethical issue arising from mapping of a human genome? So if you're making mapping the human genome or, or uh, we are we are getting the information from human genetic material by mapping it, so which will create an ethical issue. So someone uh, genetic makeup can be used of an insurance company to predict their risk of failure illness. So in this way, it may happen like the insurance companies may create a discriminations or there is unavailability of a health care for some people. So that's why the insurance company will not willing to give insurance to those people. And that will be a kind of discrimination for those people. So that's why the C is our correct answer here. We're going to proceed to structured question here. So in structured question, the first question is uh, the cyanogenic variant produce a toxin when their cells are damaged. What about a cyanogenic variant is a type of a plant which do not produce a toxin. So there are two varieties of uh, the plant. A mean absent. So a cyanogenic one not producing toxin. What about the cyanogenic is producing toxin? So the cell of the clover plant can be damaged by freezing temperature or by snail eating leaves. So the toxin kill the snail, but also damage the plant as well. So you can see like uh, the, the asanogenic, the, the region where the most of often they are found, that is a colder region. What about the cyanogenic? Uh, they are present in warmer climate. So there are the semantic relationship of uh, the bacteria with the plant. These are the white clover plant have two variants. So these are two variants are present in there. So we're gonna see that the question is the complete the hypothesis to link each variant to the region uh, it, it is most often found. Uh, a cyanogenic variant are found in a colder climate. The reason is what? Because they do not produce toxin uh, when the cells are damaged by the cold climate. So if they are not producing the toxin uh, when there is a cold climate, so they can easily survive in a cold environment. What about the cyanogenic variety are found in a warmer climate because they are protected from predation of snail due to toxin released by damaged cell. So when the snail damaged the cell and it released the toxin and the, the, uh, the snail is uh, harmed by this toxin, so that's why the, the snail cannot harm them so they can easily survive in a warm climate. And their cell may be damaged uh, by the toxin in a cold climate. So these are two reasons so we can give as hypothesis. To investigate the hypothesis of field study is needed. The sampling technique of, are used to estimate the population size of each variant in a different area. So why are the sampling technique used instead of uh, counting the total number of individual plants in each area? 
So instead of counting the total number of the plot, we are taking the sampling. Why? Because uh, it is difficult and uh, have more chances of error to count the large number of the plant uh, individually in each different area. So if you are counting the whole number of the plant individually, so this may cause, uh, the, this, this may have a more potential of uh, the error. And second, it's more difficult. So you can put your answer. We're gonna to move to the next question. And the two students investigate the variant plant living at the altitude between zero to 250 meter. So the student used the random sampling as a starting point of their investigation. They then go on to complete the transect. Explain how the random sampling differ from the transect method. So in the random sampling, quadrate are placed randomly over the large area, while in the transect, the quadrant are placed along the line to show how the species are changing with the different zones or different areas. So that's a major difference. Explain why the using transect would develop and improve their uh, investigations. So if you are using transect, it will develop and improve the investigation, how? So the random sampling will just show the number of the plant, while uh, what about the transect sampling will show how these plant type of changing at the different height or different altitude or different slope of the land. In a figure 11.1 shows the number of the cyanogenic variant plants found in a total close populations of 200 at the different altitudes. So number of the cyanogenic clouds are given there per 200 uh, plant. So what about along x-axis, the altitude is given there. So what's the relationship between that? The number of the cyanogenic, uh, the clover, so you can see they are decreasing from zero to 250 altitude. So if they're constantly decreasing, so in this way, the altitude, if the altitude is increasing, so number are decreasing, so they have negative co-relationship between them. Now, first question, uh, what conclusions can be made uh, about the effect of altitude on the distribution of the cyanogenic clovers? These cyanogenic clovers have the negative co-relationship with altitude. So negative relationship between number of clovers and altitude, that's your one point, or you can write the number of clover decrease by increasing the altitude. Second, predict the altitude where you would expect to find mostly the acyanogenic clover plant. So explain why the most clover plant are acyanogenic at, at that height or at that altitude. So number one, uh, they are facing at a very high zone. For example, we have a different height. So you can see if the height is increasing, so the A cyanogenic will be facing more than you can say 150 to the onward. So we can select any height, for example, 200 around or 250. So you can say uh, they're mostly facing at a high, higher altitude around 200 meter. So the reason is what higher altitude are colder. So there will be no snail for predation and they have a less competitions from other plant. So that's why they can easily survive at higher altitude. Use a theory of uh, the natural selections to explain how the cyanogenic variant of white clover plant could have developed. So now we, we're gonna use this as the theory of a natural selections. So first the cyanogenic plant get advantageous allele for production of toxin by random mutations. So if by the mutation they, they produce a gene or they produce allele, which is producing toxin. And this was an advantageous character. So due to the toxin, they are less likely to be eaten by the snail. So high survival rate give them more chance to reproduce. 
So if they can more reproduce, they have more chances to transfer their advantageous allele to the next generations. So this is our the three relevant point you can write in a sequence. The question number 12, the material cycle through the environment. So there are the different nutrients are cycling in our environment, in a natural environment. So for example, uh, the carbon um, inside the carbohydrate is released back into the atmosphere by the process of respirations. So we are breaking down the carbohydrate in the presence of oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide and water. So this carbon, what the plant absorbs by photosynthesis, it will move back by the process respirations. So the water they collect in lake can be returned to the atmosphere when the water will evaporate. So evaporation is a process when the liquid water converts into the gaseous state and it will return to the atmosphere. In B, here we have the nitrogen cycle. In the nitrogen cycle, the atmospheric nitrogen, N2, will turn into the land nitrogen nitrate by the nitrate nitrogen fixing bacteria. And it will move back from the soil to the atmosphere by the denitrifying bacteria. What about the nitrifying bacteria? So uh, are also present in the land, which will convert the decomposed body part, dead body parts of plants and animals into ammonia or uh, the ammonium compound, which in turn convert into nitrates. Now here is a question. Identify which of the bacteria in the diagram, if uh, present in a large amount, would make the soil poor for plant growth. So the bacteria which are removing the nitrate from the soil, this will decrease the availability of major nutrient to the plant that is nitrate, and the plant will have a poor growth. And this is our denitrifying bacteria. Now explain how the large amount of these bacteria would make the soil poor for the plant growth. So how they can make the soil poor for, uh, for plant growth. So basically the denitrifying bacteria remove nitrate from the soil. Now this nitrate is the major nutrient for the plant. If this major nutrient is not available, so the plant cannot have normal growth. Abiotic and biotic factor can affect the bacteria, bacterial communi communities. So for example, which is a biotic factor? So we can see ammonia and ammonium compound are non-living. Atmospheric nitrogen is a non-living or nitrate is a non-living. What about the plant? This is the living factor. So we can say this is the biotic factor of the bacterial colonies. So that one, this is a bacterial colonies, environment, biotic factor. That animal is abiotic. What about plant is a living? It's a biotic factor. The plants are important uh, part of any community. The figure 12.2 shows the effect of the biotic factor on the rate of photosynthesis by the plant. So here along x-axis, we have the light intensity. Along y-axis, we have rate of photosynthesis. Now here, rate of photosynthesis is affected by the, the light intensity is a one limiting factor, and temperature is another limiting factor, carbon dioxide is another limiting factor. So you can see when these lines will go uh, off and become horizontal, so the light intensity is no longer limiting factor. There is something else is the limiting factor. For example, at Z, it is the lowest point. Why? Because the low concentration of the carbon dioxide and low concentration of the temperature. While the Y is present uh, in between X and Z, why? Because it has high concentration of the carbon dioxide, but the low, concent low temperature. And in the same way, the X is at the highest rate of photosynthesis. Why? Because it has the both the carbon dioxide is high in concentration and high temperature. So that's why it has a highest level. So we are supposed to represent uh, this graph in this way. For example, uh, we are representing, explain the X, Y, Z level out at the different rate of photosynthesis. 
So they're going to level out at the different rate of photosynthesis so we can represent their limiting factor. For example, the Z rate is lower because low concentration of the carbon dioxide and low temperature, which are limiting factor for photosynthesis. The Y level is out second with a higher rate than Z because the high concentration of the carbon dioxide enable the high rate until it become limited by the temperature. While the X level out last with a higher rate because it has high concentration of carbon dioxide and high concentration of the temperature than Y and Z. So that's why the X level is a greater as compared to the Y and Z. So you're supposed to justify uh, these points, why the Z is in lowest level, why the Y is in medium, and why the X is in highest level. Describe the relationship between the health and disease. So we, we are defining the health is the state of physical or mental well-being while the disease is a physical or mental disorder which affect the health. Or we can say the disease causes the poor health. So that's the interactions uh, between or relationship between the health and diseases. The human papilloma virus cause cervical words. So there is uh, the cervical infections or cervical versus caused by the uh, human papilloma virus. So the diagram represents the size of HPV as it would be seen uh, using the electron microscope. So we can see like the size of images given there are 50 millimeter. So here their size is given. So the HPV shown in the diagram is the 50 millimeter and the actual size of HPV of a diagram is 50 nanometer. So we are supposed to convert the size of image into the nanometer from millimeter to nanometer. So one millimeter, there are 1000 micrometer are present. So we will multiply 50 millimeter to the 1000. This will convert 50,000 micrometer. And then we're going to convert the 50,000 micrometer, we're going to multiply by the 1,000, and then we're going to convert it into a nanometer figure. 10 raised, 5 into 10 raised to the power 9. So that will give us a nanometer figure. So now that's the, the nano, nanometer figure. So we are going to proceed with this point. So magnification is equal to the size of image divided by the actual size. So here, so we're going to multiply this figure. For example, we have uh, the, the nanometer in the size of image divided by the nanometer of an actual size. And this will give us this value. Now, this value, we need to give us the two significant figure. So when we're going to proceed to the two significant figure, so this will become 9, 0, and 0 will become 1 because we will convert into two significant figure, and this will give us our answer in the form of magnifications. So we can also represent, for example, the 9.1 into into 10 raised to power 5. So that will also be possible. You can present your answer in this way, or you can give your actual number in answer, but that should be in uh, rounding to significant figure. And you have to justify your rounding. So that's why it's advisable when you're using your calculator and whatever the answer is coming, first present this original answer and then round it in the fig to significant figure and present your the rounded answer in the given place. Women can be given a vaccine to protect against the HPV. So explain why the vaccine produce an immune response uh, to HPV, but do not cause the cervical uh, words. So the vaccine is basically contain a dead or weakened pathogen. So which are in an inactive state and they cannot produce the disease, but they are providing antigen. And these antigen stimulate immunity system to produce antibody against HPV. So that's our answer. So these um, the 
vaccines contain a pathogen which is weak or the half dead and which is bringing the antigen which is needed for the stimulation of immunity system to produce antibody against this antigen. Figure 13.2 shows the data of HPV vaccines rate from the country where the women are the screen for cervical cancer. So number one is figure, uh, this data has been given, for example, abnormal screening reserved for the cervical cancer and HPV vaccination rate is being given there. So the abnormal screening reserved for cervical cancer is given in one side. And what about HPV vaccine rate? So when we started the vaccine, you can see we started the vaccine in 2013 and we started with a high rate and uh, this is, and by when we started the vaccine, so overall the positive rate with the cervical cancer decline or it decreased. So the type of question might possible here, the cervical cancer in a non-communicable disease. So this is a, not a contagious disease. So non-communicable disease are not usually prevented by vaccine. So use the data and your scientific knowledge to explain why the vaccine can be used to prevent cervical cancer. So we're gonna use this data, for example, if you're using the vaccine, the overall, the cases with the positive report of abnormal screening result of cervical cancer decline. So what is the relationship of the vaccine with cervical cancer? So abnormal screening rate went down after vaccination, mean it increase in vaccines result, decrease in cervical cancer. So it means the vaccine reduced the number of people getting the human papilloma virus. So when human papilloma virus trigger the cervical cancer, as fewer the number of the people with HPV, there will be fewer uh, the people will get the cancer. So this is the relationship of uh, the vaccine with the uh, the cervical cancer. So we need to justify here in this question, the relationship between vaccination and cervical cancer. So if the more people are suffering by HPV and the, the more people will get the cervical cancer. So we need, to, we need to cut down the root cause by using vaccinations. Describe the two ways the scientists test new vaccine to ensure they are safe for human use. So for example, if you are introducing the new vaccine, so what are the protocols to verify it will be safe to use for human? So the testing on the living cell to make your a negative impact on metabolism. So the first, this vaccine, we're gonna test on the living cell to identify the negative impact on metabolism. Then we are testing this on animal uh, to make your the side effect and the testing on healthy volunteer to make sure they are safe to use for our patient. So we're gonna test uh, this in the three different steps. First on um, the living cells to identify the negative impact on metabolism. Second, we're gonna test on the animal to find out the any side effect. And then we're gonna test on healthy volunteer, volunteer so who are voluntarily uh, available for testing of this, uh, this vaccine because we cannot directly test on the, on the, uh, on directly the patients. The diagram show the two cell from the mosquito and the chromosome number of six. So the different type of cell divisions produce the cell A and the cell B. So here we have the cell A is a three number of chromosome while the cell B is a four uh, is our the six number of the chromosome. So cell B is a diploid cell while the cell A is a haploid cell. So the question, name the type of the cell divisions that produce the cell A and explain its importance for the mosquito. So the type of cell division is meiosis. Why? Because the number of the chromosome are half. So that is the meiosis. 
What is explanation? So it produced haploid gamete with a half set of the chromosome, which will restore into a diploid zygote after fertilizations. So, and that is the advantage. So we can explain the advantage because the haploid gamete will have half set of the chromosome and which will restore the same number of the chromosome after the fertilization. The sex uh, reproduction in uh, the important for the species. The so sexual reproduction is important for the species as it results in a difference within the species. So within the, the species of the mosquito, there are some mosquito, they need blood to lay eggs. What about the other mosquito? They do not need the blood to lay eggs. So why this is an example of discontinuous vari variations? So the, the discontinuous variation, they contain two distinct value and there is no any other value in between that. For example, there are two, dis two distinct, uh, there are the two distinct trait are present. So if there are, these are the two uh, distinct trait are present there. So if these are the two distinct traits, they are present in this like uh, uh, in this trait or mean some they can uh, lay the egg, they need the blood for laying uh, egg. What about others? They don't need the blood for laying egg. So that's why there is no value or no any other trait which is present in between that. So that's why it is uh, discontinuous variations. So nothing trade is present in between these two extreme value. So that's why this is our discontinuous trade. Now, what is the probability of a baby being male when the human sexually reproduce? So complete the genetic diagram to explain your answer. So for example, we're going to put, uh, put the male on one side, female on another side. The male is producing two different types of the gamete, X and Y, while the female is uh, having in a sex chromosome one type of the gamete it will produce. So X will go with the X and that will produce female, and X can go with a Y and that produce male. So in this way, when we are observing the overall, the ratio of the male, that is the two out of four with the Y. So the Y chromosome, it is producing male with a double X is producing female. So two out of four with a simple ratio, this will give us one out of two, or we're gonna get 0 0.5 multiply 100, and this will give us a 50%. So the probability of produce, producing 50% male and 50% female. The cornea is a part of uh, at the front of the eye they allow in the uh, allow in the light. So the cornea is a transparent part and which is allowing the light to enter into the eye. So the cornea can be damaged by the injury or diseases. The treatment often require local anesthesia that we are applying the local anesthetic uh, medicine. These local anesthetic uh, stop nerve impulses passing along the sensory neuron. So use your knowledge to the structure of a reflex arc to explain why the person would not feel pain. So when we are when we are applying the surgical operation, so we're gonna apply the local anesthesia. So the, the and the the patient will not feel any pain. So the reason is what the lo the local anesthetic will prevent the impulses to enter into relay neuron. So the brain do not receive the, any impulse from the body. If the brain is not receiving any impulse from the body, there will be no pain. So if there will be no pain. So the brain will not receive uh, the any impulse. So there will be no identification of uh, the any any uh, the stimulus coming from the body. So according to the reflex response, so the first the nerve impulses are coming from sensory to relay, and relay is moving to the brain, and brain by the motor to the effector. What about this connection will get cut at the relay part, and the nerve impulse will not move to the relay. So that's why the brain will not receive this information. Number two, here we are moving to the B. The pregnancy can affect the response of neurons to the local anesthetic. So if you're, um, if you're applying the local anesthetic, 
So uh, this will impact, this will affect the pregnancy. So uh, now the graph show the effect of local uh, anesthetic on nerve activity in women. So how it is affecting on nerve activity on women. So non-pregnant is given on the one side and the pregnant that's in the dotted line. So these are given there. So first we are having like the non-pregnant. Uh, this is going to be a solid line and pregnant on the uh, dotted lines. So you can see that this effect on the pregnant is a greater uh, as compared to the non-pregnant because there's a nerve impulses are going to become uh, the slower rate there. So here, that's are the response. So we're going to see that the type of question. Uh, look at the data over the first 10 minutes after the injections. So calculate the percentage decrease in nerve activity after the 10 minutes when the pregnant cover uh, compared to not being pregnant. So now the percentage of decrease we need to find. So for finding the percentage of the decrease overall value at the 10, so you can see one is coming around the value of uh, the 64. And what about the second is coming the value of 36. So you need to find the difference of this value. So what is the value of at the point 10? For example, uh, we're going to calculate this, uh, the given value. If you're having uh, this point and, and this point, you will find this is one of the value. It's going to be, for example, if this ratio is becoming 64 and uh, second value at the point 10. So we can find that's our, the, around 36, this value, and that's the value at 10. So in this value, you're supposed to draw the line by the pencil and find the value of highest value minus initial value. So we will find the percentage decrease. We're going to find by the formula. So the final value minus initial value divided by initial value multiplying to the 100. And that will be 64 minus 36 divided by 64 multiplying to the 100. And this will give us 43.75%. And this is our percentage decrease. That value is 43.75%. The data in the graph has the range bar plotted given there. These gives the highest and the lowest value at each point. Why is this an important when we are presenting this data? So when this data is containing of what the highest bar and the lowest bar, number one, so these are values are being given. You can see from each given value, there's a highest and lowest bar are given. Why it is important uh, for presenting this data? So the question is why it is uh, why this is important for or improving the, the presentation of this data. So the highest and lowest value will help us to estimate the uncertainty. So if there will be maximum fluctuations of highest and lowest value, so they will give us the maximum uncertainty we can estimate, or we can have a maximum chance of deviations from the expected value. So if you have certain type of the expected value, so maximum deviation above and below what is my, what might possible, so it will, it will give us to estimate that. Explain why the stem cell taken from the embryo are more suitable than those from the adult bone marrow. So the stem cell, uh, we are taking the stem cell for the transplantations or for other purposes. So uh, now the question is like explain why the stem cell taken from the embryo are more suitable than those who are taken from the bone marrow. So the embryo stem cell can differentiate into any type of the body cell. So while the bone marrow cell cannot differentiate into a corneal cell. So why? Because uh, the differentiation spectrum or potential of the, the embryo cell. So these are considered the totipotent cell. Why? Because they can differentiate to the any body part. What about the differentiation spectrum in the bone marrow cell is become more narrow and smaller. So that's why they cannot convert into the antibody tissue. So that's why they will not produce the cornea. So that one, we're going to move to the next question here. The scientist can use the embryo stem cell uh, technology for treating the damaged cornea to restore vision. So read the information in the box. 
So the cornea cells are the transparent to allow the light to pass through. Now, cornea cell uh, tissue do not have the blood vessels to order, uh, maintain, uh, remain the transparent. So these are some values are given there. Now the question is, the to prevent the new blood vessel formation flowing to the transplantations. For example, if we are transplanting the cornea and if new blood vessels start growing in that, this will disturb the image of the uh, patient. So genetically engineered cell produce a protein which prevent the formation of blood vessels. So now there's a question, describe the main step involved in genetically engineer, engineering donor corneal cell and identify any improvement and risk from this type of treatment. So here there is a question, for example, uh, we are supposed to give first the method and second is the improvement and third is the risk. So for example, the method is what? So we're gonna take the desired protein gene is cut by the restriction enzyme from the normal donor cell's DNA. So we're gonna take the one, uh, the donor cell's DNA and we, we're gonna cut that the desired protein gene. And then we are using a polymerase chain reactions technique to increase the number of copies of this gene. So we produce the multiple copies of the, the desired gene. And after producing multiple copies of desired gene, we put the desired gene in donor cornea by using ligase enzyme. Now this ligase enzyme helps to connect the phosphodiester bond between desired gene and the, uh, the DNA of the, the donor uh, cornea cell cell. So in this way, this will connect the desired gene protein with the corneal cell. So then this genetically modified donor cornea tissue is ready for safe to implant. So this will be safe to tra transplantations. So this will be easily transplant. Okay. Now we're going to move to the next is the improvement. So this genetically engineered cornea has low rejection of the cornea tissue by a host. That's number one. Number two, it will prevent the formation of blood vessel, which improve the transparency of cornea in the patient, resulting into the better vision. And number three, we are proceeding to the risk factor. So when it will modify protein gene may not go into the every target cell. This result into maybe abnormal response. So that more, may possible, this will, this will not move into an old target cell and that will create an abnormal response. Number two, the modified protein gene may join with the chromosomes in the random places. So they do not properly prevent the formation of the blood vessels in a, trans, in a transplanted cornea. So that's also a risk. And the third factor is the treated cell may be replaced naturally by the patient's own untreated cell. So this will also create another problem. So that's why you can also present a one or two risk here. You can also put the improvement, one or two improvement you can put. What about the method? You have to explain all step by step to secure full six marks in these questions. So we have completed this unit. Hopefully it will be helpful for you. So for further any kind of the suggestion, you can put it into the comment box. Hopefully it will be helpful for you. Thank you. Thank you very much.